Hi, I'm Reggie and uh, welcome to Read Tech. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, this is the first time that I've done an unboxing and uh, I bought another Raspberry Pi 4 for a um, specific project um, that I hope to shoot some videos on. Um, it's for streaming and potentially a mobile streaming um, situation. And since I needed a not only the Raspberry Pi, but um, I needed a, a case and I could use another power supply. Um, I started looking at some of the kits that were available on Amazon and I ran across this um, Kana kit. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it or not, but uh, it looked like a pretty good deal. Um, I spent, let's see, it was $110 basically. And this is the Raspberry Pi 4 with um, uh, eight gigabytes of RAM. So my other Raspberry Pi 4 only had, I say only, um, four gigs, but I figured, hey, why not? Maybe I can run some more containers and give me some other options for doing some interesting things with the additional RAM. So I went ahead and got the eight gig. Um, so let's go ahead and open up the box. All right, it's got a little readme here um, to make sure that you uh, connect the micro HDMI to the HDMI zero port and that uh, they do not include a micro SD card, um, which is required. Obviously um, you've got to put the operating system and such on there. Um, and they also suggest that you do not um, insert the micro SD card until you've actually fully assembled the case which makes sense. You may damage the, you know, your SD card um, while you're putting the case together. No big deal, not a problem for me. Um, and <laughs> they're also suggesting that you watch the case installation video, um, which they have a URL for. Um, and they note that the board must be installed on the flat base underneath the two notches. And we'll see what that actually means. Let's see, also, there's a little thank you card. Um, and where to contact them for help if you need it. So first thing, you've got a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. Always can use another one of those. Um, conveniently, that's the same type of cable um, that I need for uh, my cameras, um, Sony A6000 and A6400s. So that is nice. Um, it comes with a small fan, kind of looks a little cheap, but um, yeah, so it comes with a fan. And let's see, looks like a and this was something else that I saw that it came with that I was pretty interested in. So it's a USB-C power cable that actually has an on and off button. That's pretty nice. Um, so with this, you basically don't have to um, unplug the physical cable um, either on the power supply side uh, that plugs into the power outlet or on the actual Raspberry Pi itself. So looking forward to uh, using that. All right, next we have the clear case. And it looks like it's a fairly generic case. Um, I really wasn't looking for anything fancy there's a possibility that, again, if, if I do end up using this particular Raspberry Pi for my um, 
uh, mobile live streaming setup that I'm considering. Um, it's going to be in a backpack or some sort of bag anyway, so it's not even going to be seen. Um, so, but you know, basic case, nothing special, nothing to write home to, write home about. So, you have that. Um, let's see. And interestingly, it's it's attached to the power supply, but we have three heat sinks that have looks like they've got built-in adhesive on them. Um, I don't know exactly which of the uh, chips is the hottest. Of course, the the large one is has to be for the actual main um, CPU package, but yeah, so you've got that. Um, then you've got a USB-C power supply. And the big thing about this is this has um, 5.1 volts output at three and a half amps. So um, I had read even before I got my first Raspberry Pi that it was very important to get a power supply that um, is relatively beefy because uh, the Raspberry Pi uses Raspberry Pi 4 uses more power than um, you know the earlier models for sure. So uh, it's kind of cool that it actually does come with a uh, with a beefy power supply. Let's see. There's also comes with a quick start guide. And it even says troubleshooting guide on page 14. So it's interesting. Let's see what they actually have to say about troubleshooting. Looks like the first half of it is about displays making sure the micro SD is fully and firmly seated. It's fairly basic. Uh, let's see what they've got in the front. Um, so there's a warranty registration that you need to activate within 30 days. Um, some support email addresses and URLs as well as forums. And, oh, this is pretty cool. So it gives you a little diagram that outlines, you know, where everything is and what everything is on the actual Raspberry Pi 4 board. And even cooler, you've got, well, it's actually not that cool. Basically tells you where you can um, connect the fan on the GPIO. So the red and the black dot are um, positive and negative where you can connect the fan leads. And general information about starting up uh, Raspbian, configuring Wi Wi-Fi, um, using the GPI port, IO port with Python, which is interesting because it probably doesn't have a lot of other information. Oh, even some, <laughs> some small examples um, for using Python to control an LED and a button. That's pretty neat. I might actually have to try some of those. Um, I haven't been very successful with using the GPIO, so maybe I'll do some videos on that as I learn myself. Um, so that's that. And then finally, the last thing in the box is the 8 gig uh, Raspberry Pi 4. Um, so I'm not really going to do anything with it, but let's just open it up just to make sure that everything is cool inside. There it is. Looks just like uh, the other ones. 
and that's pretty much it. So pretty good, pretty decent deal. Um, cause I believe on Amazon, uh, like I said, I paid $110 for this kit. Um, and I think the eight gig Raspberry Pi by itself was approximately um, $80. So paid about 30 bucks extra um, for all the other stuff. Uh, so it's not a bad deal. Um, you know, the cables, the fan, the um, uh, case, and the power supply is definitely worth another 30 bucks. So that's why I made that decision. But anyway, that's the Kana kit, Kana kit, however you pronounce it. Um, and that's it for this uh, video. Uh, if, if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe, please. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.